What if Muzan becomes a Hashira? Picture a world where the demon lord Muzan skipped the villain auditions in Demon Slayer. Instead, in this bizarre alternate universe, he is fighting the good fight against the demon tyranny as a Hashira. But how exactly will Muzan's role as one of the good guys play out in this flip the script universe? Starting off just like the original storyline, Muzan's entry into the world would be all sorts of complex, leaving him with a frail body. But his fierce determination to survive would burn just as intensely as it did in the manga and anime. However, unlike before, he would develop a strong sense of compassion for the one person who tirelessly cared for him and kept him going, his doctor. From a young age, Muzan's world revolved around this kind doctor, who not only treated him, but also instilled in him the values of kindness. Thanks to this unique bond, Muzan's fascination with herbs and concoctions would take root. He would watch with awe as the doctor mixed various herbs to create medicines and antidotes, nurturing his love for this field. Even with the ticking clock in his mind, Muzan would deeply cherish the simple moments he shared with his doctor. But a twist of fate would unravel his peaceful existence. One day, a demon would materialize right before Muzan's eyes. The hungry demon would lunge, aiming to feast on Muzan. However, before the demon's plans could come to fruition, the doctor would step in, sacrificing himself to shield Muzan. As Muzan witnesses the only person that he had in this world falling prey to the demon's brutality, anger would grip his senses. He would raise his voice in a mixture of grief and frustration, questioning why his friend chose to give up his own life when death was already inching closer for him. As a result of this intense rage, Muzan would do the unexpected. Despite his frail body, he would lunge at the monster with all his might and try his best to fight against him. During his struggles, he would bite and chew on the monster's flesh, which to his surprise would strengthen his once frail body. Thanks to his deep understanding of herbs, Muzan would cleverly utilize wisteria poison to neutralize the rampaging demon. On a little side note, while it's important to note that wisteria is poisonous to demons, Muzan, having consumed parts of the demon flesh, would still possess the DNA of a human being, saving him from the effects of the wisteria flower. Now back to the epic fight, as destiny would orchestrate it, the first rays of daylight would help him win against the demon. With the weight of his friend's loss still heavy on his shoulders, Muzan would find himself wandering aimlessly through the forest, and as luck would have it, he would end up crossing paths with none other than the formidable insect Hashira, Shinobu Kocho. An unexpected connection would form between them, as Shinobu would take Muzan under her wing, sharing and teaching him her personally created breathing style, the insect breathing. With Shinobu as his guide, Muzan would weave his herb knowledge into creating some seriously potent poison to take down demons. The real twist? He would also channel his inner buffet enthusiast and chow down on demon flesh to double up on strength. As a result, Muzan's resume would include regeneration powers, demon grade stamina, speed that's got places to be, and strength that's flexing harder than a gym enthusiast on steroids. With his mastery over deadly poisons, Muzan would create his own style, known as the poison breathing. This unique technique would let him land lethal blows on demons with precision. And because of his intense hatred for demons, Muzan as a Kinoe ranked demon slayer would wipe out more than 50 demons without breaking a sweat. Through his unyielding dedication and exceptional achievements, Muzan would ultimately end up rising to the rank of Hashira. Muzan's journey as a Hashira would be anything but a smooth ride. Initially, his ascent would raise eyebrows among his peers, who'd accuse him of taking shortcuts due to his demon flesh trick. They'd fling harsh words his way, branding him as pathetic and more. And, like they say, words can hurt more than a punch. Similarly, in Muzan's case, these verbal jabs would chip away at his spirit, causing him to grow distant and cold, withdrawing from social interactions with his fellow demon slayers. His singular focus? Demolishing demons left and right. The isolation would lead to a loss of empathy for humans. Yet paradoxically, 
he'd wrestle with a yearning for approval and acknowledgement from his peers. In the swordsmith's village, a new chapter would unfold for Muzan as he crosses paths with Tanjiro and Nezuko. For the first time, Muzan feels a sense of acceptance radiating from Tanjiro's gaze. However, Muzan's defenses remain up, and he keeps his distance. It's only when circumstances push them to join forces against the fourth Upper Moon Demon that Muzan begins to let down his guard. During their collaboration, Tanjiro's unwavering optimism and compassion start chipping away at Muzan's hardened exterior. Slowly but surely, Muzan starts to see a glimmer of humanity that he had long suppressed. Following the successful defeat of Hatengu and the rescue of numerous swordsmiths, Muzan would find himself surrounded by a wave of appreciation and affection from those he helped and his peers. Upon his return from the swordsmith village, a chance meeting with Genya Shinazagawa would make Muzan realize the similarities between himself and Genya, both using drastic measures to compensate for their physical limitations. Empathy guides Muzan's actions and he extends his mentorship to Genya. Seeing in Genya a kindred spirit, Muzan would take him under his wing, offering guidance and support in his path as a demon slayer. Now for the million dollar question. In this alternate universe with Muzan in a different gig, who steps up as the antagonist? My bet's on Kokoshibo, and here's why. He was the second most powerful demon after Muzan in the original Demon Slayer storyline, so it's kind of poetic for him to take the stage as the ultimate villain boss. Now let's talk about danger. Kokoshibo wields the second strongest breathing style, and that insatiable hunger for intense power could turn the whole world topsy-turvy. But wait, with Muzan in the picture, can he take down Kokoshibo and his fierce squad of upper moons in his human form? Well, the answer's a mix of yes and no. After Muzan nails his takedown of Hatengu, he would team up with Shinobu for a face-off against Doma. Now, knowing that Shinobu alone might not cut it against Doma's might, Muzan would consume parts of Doma to pump up his strength to match him. And here's the kicker. Muzan would also whip out his lethal poisonous breath style, putting a dent in the upper moon's defenses. With a proper poison cocktail swirling in his system, Muzan would swing into action, going for the big beheading on Doma. And guess what? This time, Shinobu wouldn't have to take the fall. As for squaring off against Akaza, let's leave a bit of action for Tanjiro and Gyu Tomioka to handle. In the ultimate showdown, Muzan would join forces with Muichiro, Sanami, and Gyome to confront Kokoshibo within the Infinity Palace. As the Hashiras launch their assault, they'd initially struggle against Kokoshibo's moon-breathing technique. But soon enough, they'd regroup, ready to face the challenge head-on. However, even with their combined might, Kokoshibo would prove to be a formidable opponent, gaining the upper hand against them. It's at this crucial moment that Muzan would step in, making a calculated move. Consuming parts of Kokoshibo, Muzan would develop his own blood demon art, intertwined with poison. This action wouldn't kill Kokoshibo, but it would force him to shed his deceptive form, revealing his true, grotesque face. Confronting the results of his quest for invincibility, Kokoshibo would stare at his reflection and see the true horror of his powers, making him realize the enormity of his actions. In a final twist, the revelation that Muichiro is his descendant would provide Kokoshibo with a sliver of hope. As his last act, Kokoshibo would turn Muichiro into a demon, aiming to preserve his legacy while allowing himself to meet his demise by stepping into the sunlight. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been mulling over this concept and I must say, it feels like a fitting conclusion to our alternate universe where Muzan takes up the mantle of a Hashira. Now here's the part where I'm really keen to know your thoughts. How do you all perceive this narrative twist? And hey, what breast style do you envision Muzan adopting in this scenario? Additionally, do you believe Muzan would find contentment in his human role? Or is his obsession with perfection and eternal life too overpowering for him to truly live as a human being? 
I'm genuinely intrigued by your viewpoints on this matter, so don't hold back. Share your insights in the comment section.